Uh, how many times did you not move because you weren't sure? Mm-hmm. You, 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 didn't, you, you, didn't, you didn't press the send button. You didn't send a proposal. You were kind of afraid even to state the quote, you know, you're you're telling yourself no before the organization tells you no. Happy Wednesday, my winners and goal getters. How are you? Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Getting the Win Show. And today's a special one. I've got uh, Ayana Matthews, who is someone who's actually involved in international business and travel. So you guys are going to hear some intriguing nuggets on this one. And hey, as you can imagine, as someone who's a consultant, this lady is busy. <laughs> She's busy. So you, you'll you learn all of her tools and, and tricks that she uses to remain as productive as possible. She is the founder and CEO of Gardner Matthews Global Management, and she'll tell you all about it in the interview. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. As promised, we have the beautiful Ayana Matthews here with us. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks so much for being on. No, Melissa, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this incredible platform about something that whether you want to admit it or not procrastination has haunted all of us you know what I mean <laughs> so, in one way or another <laughs> exactly <laughs> in one way or another so yeah. you know for our audience kind of talk about your company uh Garner Matthews Global Management and what people can expect when they when they take a look you know research your company and decide to go forward with you Absolutely. So um, Gartner Matthews Global Management launched about actually 13 years ago, um, initially in a a completely different capacity, but through requests from the corporate community, it became a business consultancy firm that specialized in um, improving efficiencies with organizations as well as marketing. And so um, what someone would expect when they are um, looking, we're currently uh, in the process rebranding. Um, website is under a relaunch, but social media is currently out there. We've got um, YouTube at Ayana Fix My Business and everything else will fall under Gartner Matthews uh, Global Management with Instagram and of course, LinkedIn. Um, And so what you would expect upon making initial contact is just a series of questions about pain points, what are your goals? What have you tried? What were what were the results of those attempts? And then um, coming up with a curated or customized solution um, and phasing them in. I mean, no problem is going to be resolved overnight. And so um, understanding that it will take some time to adjust implementation, looking at the results and continuing for it in that way. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Now share with our audience your amazing backstory. Because let me tell y'all, like Ayana Matthews is hashtag Karma San Diego. This woman has traveled. <laughs> this woman has traveled everywhere. So like share with our audience your backstory where Gardner Matthew, uh, Matthews Global Management has been able to take you. So, um, well, starting with my language abilities with uh, Spanish and Japanese pretty much covers all of uh, the, the Latin population. Um, I've done. Uh, I've been down to the DR, uh, as far south as Chile and Argentina. Wow. Um, understanding and working with uh, companies in mining and the winery business. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gone this, uh, to Africa. Really, really uh, privileged to, to have that experience, and I'm um, connecting with the Department of Trade and Industry (DTI) for uh, the South African government, and then that opens up a whole world of um, again mining, which is a huge industry in the country, um, as well as the automobile industry and technology. And one thing that, um, because of, uh, my personal uh, like is sustainability and recycled art. And I found the most incredible um, artists uh, using recycled materials um, in their artwork. And then with Japan, I've worked uh, in aerospace and um, aviation, including putting together a summit um, for that industry in a business matchmaking format 
So there were some Japanese companies that wanted to do business with Florida based uh, companies in that space. And I was able to facilitate and organize a three day summit to make that uh, work. And in my own personal travels, of course, you throw in some Europe. Um, I've been to the Czech Republic. Um, I've been to the Middle East, Oman, absolutely incredible. And just, you know, kind of throughout my travels, I've always had a, a desire to travel to the places that were not so common, not very popular. And again, because I've taken that road less traveled, it's been so, so fundamental in my business um, today, whether I'm working with a small business owner that's just launching their own, you know, being a solopreneur, entrepreneur like myself, all the way up to mid-sized companies that have about 250 employees. So I've got range. Um, people look at my travel experiences, um, kind of like that stamp of uh, approval, you know, like, well, if you can do business over here with these people who are so different with the language, with the um, business etiquette, so different than, you know, what we have here in the States. Well, of course you can do business with us. And then um, a little caveat to that is doing intercontinental uh, continental business. So, for example, Chile, as I mentioned, um, is huge in the mining industry, and so is South Africa. So imagine connecting Ch the Chileans to the South Africans and doing business in that way. Wow. So um, personal travels has always been a blend. And I would never would have uh, thought that I would have been, you know, kind of created my own niche and be able to utilize all these aspects of, of my skills into, um, into a business, which is Gartner Matthews Global Management. Wow. Like, I can only imagine what the phone conversations are like, like between the Chilean folks and the, the South African folks. Um, just to kind of piggyback off of that, talk about the importance of finding commonality, because that would be required in terms of connecting people from different cultures who do share that same common industry or niche to accomplish their goals. Absolutely. So, you know, the the main the main thing that I've discovered is first you have to be able to be comfortable and in a position to relinquish control. Mm. Um, a lot of business owners, a lot of people who, you know, can tell, you know, 20, 30 years in the industry, you know, I know and and of course great. That's great. You know, of course, you are proficient. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in that position. Right. But it's another um, level when you have to relinquish co the control to, in my case, an outsider. I'm a third party coming in, but also with a very obstruct, um, how can I say, like a detached view. And so it's going to come with some, you know, some things that you may, eat, the company or the, the, the entrepreneur may even know about. But it's another thing when, um, you know, someone else kind of, you know, tells you something. And so it's more of a finesse in a way in which I deliver the information. Of course, data, right? You have yeah. to, you know, provide some data. Can't just come off here what I think and what I believe and my feelings, right? And nor should that be received from the business itself. And so, um, you know, finding that commonality on how to communicate and then also having a gift and ability to convey something that's very, uh, far-fetched, right? Like, what do you mean you want me from, you know, I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm from Atlanta and you're telling me I can, you know, I can do business with the Japanese. Like, nah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> think about it, you know? And then I have to start spelling out what is the market looking like um, in Japan that is applicable to that business and how that business owner can make money and how they're actually losing out on an untapped uh, client or clientele. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it does take again, finesse, clear explanation and having those examples to pull from in order to show, because sometimes people have to see it, you know, um, other, you know, most people are really creative. And when, when we have the discussions, they're getting it, but some people have to see, and especially if they have not seen another person that looks just like them, doing a business like what I'm proposing. And that's um, a challenge that I accept all day long because it's like, yeah, I know you didn't see it, but I'm telling you, we 
uh, it can happen. And with my know-how and expertise, I can help guide you to success. And that's the thing. I'm not trying to take over anybody's business. It's simply to help them see the stepping stones that may be underwater, mm -hmm. you know, that they can't see for themselves. And you might like, oh, I, I can't get there. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Beautifully said. Yeah. So, you know, with all of that, obviously busy, <laughs> obviously very busy. So talk about how you remain productive and like basically stay on schedule with all of your tasks. How do you fuel productivity on a constant basis? So several years ago, I want to say about 10 years ago, I really, really um, realized that writing stuff down on pieces of paper was not working trying to memorize or remember everything, what it wasn't working. And so um, I strictly go off of a calendar system. I utilize Google Calendar. Um, it's on my phone It's um, and I have it set up in such a way that it not only sends me a, an alert in a certain repetition, um, but also reminding me via email, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm getting about six reminders for that uh, that that task that I need to uh, take care of, that meeting that I have coming up, that, um, you know, like our interview that's coming up. So that way, if there is any changes that need to take place, you know, and you also have to be respectful of other people's time, right? Definitely. You know, hey, um, dang, I, I got, so, I, so how I have it set up is that I'll set it out um, at the bare minimum, um, let's say if it's long, a week out, three days out and then an hour out. So mm. for the most part at that three day mark, I'm looking at, okay, this came up. Let me go back to my calendar and I look at the whole week. So what do I have going on the day before, day after that could be a conflict? Do I need to change the time, for example? Oh my goodness. You know, for those of us who are flying and stuff, oh, you know, and you, ha you have to be kind of, um, how can I say, realistic, right? I mean, if I'm flying on that day, something might happen. It might be a delay. I might, you know, we might get caught up in the air. We might, whatever yep. the case may be. Yep. So I might say, let me move this a little bit down. You know, let me adjust and then notify that person. So that way, if there is room for adjusting um, on the same day, great, we get it done. And if not, then we definitely need to reschedule. Um, still a work in pro progress. Um, like many of us, you know, I tend to over schedule, mm -hmm. but I also um, understand that, you know, by sticking to a time constraint and, um, you know, like, okay, I know I'm going to meet with, you know, this group of people and we need to keep this at 45 minutes. We, if we start, you know, just letting it spill over to that two hour, you know, like, now you lose an opportunity to take advantage of that time for following up, prepare your notes, send that follow up email or send the things that you the deliverables that you committed during the um, during the conversation. So um, so I mean, like I say, it, it's still a work in progress, but I, I do notice a huge uh, difference when I am you know, left all of this. Not not necessarily to chance, but you know, I'm I'm gonna remember it. No, things happen, other things pop up. You know, you get off the phone, you you done done 10, 10 other things after that. <laughs> and so putting it in Google Calendar has I mean helped me tremendously, tremendously. Awesome. Oh, and might I add, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then adding that person too to to the um invite, because the um, they may not get the phone notification like it comes up on my end, but it'll definitely send both of us an email. And True. so let's say too, on their end, if they, there's changes in their schedule, then they can say, oh yeah, you know what? Let me reach out to Ayana because I'm not going to be able to do that. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I mean, on that note, in terms of increasing productivity for you, I noticed you recently onboarded a few interns kind of talk about how that has helped in terms of your productivity yes yeah, so this will be my second time working with the college in the state of south carolina um and it's been a while i want to say about four or five years actually since i was uh, back in in florida and i was working with valencia college and um university of central florida so first part was getting reacclimated on that process 
And then understanding that not everything I was doing before may be apl- uh, applicable during this phase, because we're talking about post-COVID. A lot yeah. of things have changed, right? And so, um, and dealing with um, understanding how to communicate with them because all of them have never worked together before. And there was not really um, commonalities, which I had at the other universities. Gotcha. You know, either they were all international students or they were all a part of the same program or they all un- had an understanding of, you know, what would be expected of them. And they had like really strict requirements for an internship. Whereas in this case, um, that was, you know, it was a little bit different. And so just um, time management, time management, time management, and remaining flexible. Um, I do want to point out this. Uh, a lot of companies, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, I, I truly, for two reasons why the internship program is, is personal for me. Number one, I actually um, completed co-ops as a requirement for my college. And I'm really grateful for that because it allows me experience um, to work in the field. So Mm -hmm. when I graduated, I already had two jobs at major corporations that I could put on my resume. Wow. I'm learning. Yeah. I mean, right. As soon as I graduated, I already had to. And that meant not only two um, resume pieces, right? but also two prospective uh, employers that I could go back to because th- those relationships had already been built. So in saying that, being able to relay that information to the students that I'm working with. Now, I'm not hiring full time. Most of my employees are 1099 or I hire based on projects, but it's also to give them an opportunity to, to have something on their resume, real world, um, application and experience. They're working on a live project, not busy work. Right. And, they, and it is truly collaborative. And so it's teaching them how to work remotely, how to work as a team, how to ask questions, how to be proactive, and all of these things that most people just want you to assume that you're just going to pick it up. No, you, you're not. You're not. And so being able to help um, guide them through that process but that means I have to be a week or two ahead because if there is a mistake, if there is a delay, if there is something that has to be redone, I need to be able to predict that that's going to happen and be able to help them. And so it's constantly tweaking, tweaking. We're going to set a di- deadline, but we might have to tweak and adjust, tweak and adjust. And so um, but but I was about to say regarding to the small business owner. If you've never hired employees before, you've never had a staff, this is a great teaching moment for you because Mm -hmm. you learn how to deal with different personalities. You learn how to deal with scheduling. You learn how to deal with, yeah, they may not show up. They may not come through. And so you learn again for yourself how to keep tweaking and adjusting and relinquishing that control. Trust that they're going to do what you ask them to do. And if they don't, don't be afraid to tell them no. That's an opportunity to ch- challenge them to do better or make something better. So um, I value the internship program a lot. Um, and you know, and and it it is 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 challenging um, in the beginning, but the rewards in seeing uh, their progress when they can finish something when they first submitted, uh, you know, let's say a presentation that really wasn't up to par, but it's for your business. It's to help you. And you're also helping them indirectly. So it's truly an exchange that's mutually beneficial when you do it the right way. Indeed. Talking that mutualism, y'all. You know, we always talk about that. <laughs> and it has to work for both parties. Otherwise, somebody's going to feel like they're being used or taken advantage for or from, you know, from the business owner side. Like, yeah, this is a waste of time. I don't have time for that. But I mean, you do. And then, and it's all. And then also when you follow their career and you can look and see where they've progressed, um, like in my case, uh, you know, five or seven years later, you know, they go and work with big companies, account executives, working in marketing, working as uh, business development uh, professionals. And that's what they wanted to do. And then whatever they learned and was able to take away from the experience with Gardner Matthews Global Management, that number one, got them a job. Right. Right. That, right. That, that speaks leaps and bounds. And you can say 
you know, you can feel um, that you've attributed to that success and, and, and think about just how you can keep giving back. And, and that that's how I give back too, especially for the student who is learning another language and it may not be their major. They might be minoring in Spanish or they might be taking it on the side. Well, then I can give them tasks to do such as, okay, let's go ahead and um, you know put this post in Spanish or let's make the, um, the hashtags in Japanese. And then that way they're getting a little bit of more pra- real world practice. And then they can see how by adding those small elements make all the difference. And now you're broadening the visibility of that post that only would have reached the you know Americans, you know, probably however the algorithm set up um, at that, you know, for, for that time. But now you, you're for, forcing the post to reach more. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So what do you what do you feel is the most rewarding part of your career? I mean, you've been, I believe you said 13 years so far. So like yes. uh, talk about what's been the most rewarding part of your career so far. So I would say uh, being a connector and um, having the people who have entrusted me with their really unique, uh, special projects in industries that most people, you know, can only dream of working with. Um, That has been the most rewarding part for someone to pick up the phone and say, someone told me about you. And someone said that if I wanted something done right, that I needed to contact you. I mean, what what can I say? <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you need done? <laughs> right. What, what, what is the task? And to always, you know, have it be something different, you know, j- just different uh, project. You know, I've been a project manager, business developer, consultant, and kind of having it all wrapped into one. But again, the confidence that business owners, um, people who are managing directors of these organizations, people who are, um, you know, their butt is on the line too, but they, they have no problem. You know, we sit down, we have a talk. I've learned over the years how to ask the right questions, mm. but more importantly, I've learned how to listen. You have to listen. You have to ask the right questions and then you can't just go with your checklist. It's great to have. You got to have that to start with. And then I've also learned to send that beforehand. Don't just show up to the meeting and thinking you're going to uh, powwow. You've only had 45 minutes allocated. Give them time to mull over yeah. what it is that really needs to be discussed. Because otherwise you're getting into you know all this background information, which of course is important. But I figure if I've done my homework and due diligence by researching the company, I've popped on LinkedIn, read up, you know, something about the individual that I'm meeting with, the people that I'm reading, uh, meeting with, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to assume that they've done the same thing. So now we're not having an interview. We're having a discussion about the problem that you need solved. Right. And then we can determine whether it's going to be a good fit, mutually beneficial, and then we have to um, determine and establish, um, you know, the you know being realistic on the timeline that it's going to take to to make this happen. Very, very true. Um, and a lot of that ties in the, for folks who are listening. This may sound very front loaded in terms of doing the research, but in a lot of ways that actually helps with your productivity while you're going through the actual task, like getting the Absolutely. homework done ahead of time. So this ties into another question I had for you, Ayana, and you kind of touched on it, but talk about the importance of having the confidence with what you're doing and how that ties into being productive, because, you know, you, you do a lot of research, a lot of background stuff before you get on your, on your calls to make sure that they know that you're competent. So kind of talk about the, the importance of having that confidence before going in. Absolutely. So I, I just want for people who are watching the show to think about how many times did you not move because you weren't sure mm-hmm. you, you, you didn't you, you didn't you didn't press the send button you didn't send a proposal you were kind of afraid even to state the quote you know you're you're telling yourself no before the organization tells you no all that's all 
So, but when you have the confidence in what you know, what you can bring, what you can do to help, you know the industry, you know some people in the uh, that can in on your side as far as resources that you can reach out to, um, to help you know make this thing happen, right? Then yeah, you're you're not slowing down the process. I found that when you're not confident and you're second guessing yourself, you that email that you should have sent, you know, in that ten minutes, now you sent it out two weeks later, mm. right? Because I, it's just something about I don't know about, and you fill in the blank, whatever it is. I don't know if they're gonna pay that. I don't know if they're gonna hire a small business. I don't know if I'm big enough. Mm. I don't know if if you know I I, I don't know uh, the vice pre. You know you you thinking of all these high end people now. Of course it helps now. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> but instead of changing that fear into faith, okay, these are the things that I don't know going in. But yeah, I mean, how, how hard is for me to pick up the phone and start? you know, researching and asking, right? Right. And sometimes once you start moving, some of the things will come into place. You'll think about somebody you hadn't thought about in years. I remember that gentleman that worked in this industry. Mm-hmm. You know what? And he, and he he was nice. I think he, I think he would be a good person for me to call and ask this question. And you do have to be uh, vulnerable and people have to uh, you know, accept that about themselves. You're not gonna know everything. I mean, you're not. Part. But you do. But you don't want to go in. Uh, you know, kind of talking out the corners of your mouth either. But just you know, just understand that if you're confident, things will move faster. Even as if it's a faster decision to the no. Mm. <laughs> That's so, true. Yeah. That's true. And I think for. In some cases, folks procrastinate out of that fear of no. But sometimes, as you're saying, like, take the action that gets you to the no faster, because the quicker you get the no, you know there's a yes out there, so you keep going. You know what I mean? And think about the twist, right? How many times have we applied for something? I mean, I'm talking about the people that have, you know, it, it could be a job, right? Mm-hmm. And you apply you got told no, then you go and you ha- you gain other experiences. And then that second or third time, they're like, what? How do we miss you? But you don't tell them, well, I didn't have all this before. <laughs> you don't tell them that. <laughs> you just thank you to say thank you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I can think of several um, instances where I've even asked to be interviewed and I, and I was denied and then went back. Sometimes it was a year later. Sometimes it was several years later and got an immediate yes, immediate. Mm. And so you can't take the no as a no forever. It's just no for right now. Love that. Just no for right now. No for yeah. right now. Love for that. right now. Right. For whatever it may be, you know, but it, it may just be no for right now. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. So want to get for someone who is that productive i would love to to know like do you ever get tempted to procrastinate or like is there ever like what do you do on days when you when you're not feeling your best when you're not feeling 100 percent? yeah though those days are hard you know um and and various things may may impact that right it may be uh maybe overthinking maybe that something um you know, let's say I'm going to use presentations because I do a lot of those. Maybe, okay, I'm working on a presentation and it's just not flowing the way that I really, really want to present uh, this solution or or do a presentation on the company to the specific uh, company. And so, um, but what I will do is go back and think about what was I able to achieve? I mean, because you, if you're, if you're just saying now, you should feel bad if you know that you said all day and you just binge Netflix all day. You should feel bad, right? Um, but you got to realize what caused you to do that, and really prioritize. Mm-hmm. What do I have? I have to get this done today, because the longer that it takes for you to get though, because you know, ne- nothing is just one step. Usually, right. the things that I work on. 
you know, like most of us, it's like four, five, 10 steps in between. Correct. So knowing that every time that you're plowing through that one step is getting you close to, to your end goal, mm -hmm. that should, um, that definitely uh, serves as motivation for me. Um, but checklists, uh, I, I have a Samsung, uh, tw the 23 ultra and have a notes capability. Mm -hmm. And I use the checklist. Like you can actually put it where it gives you like a little a square box. next to mm -hmm. that. I know and so, and I, I take so much pleasure in checking it, <laughs> seeing it go <laughs> off, right? Yep, yep. And let's say I don't get everything done that first day. I go back to that same list. And now I, I have the existing list from yesterday. Yep. And I can either decide to add to it or say, you know what? This is enough. Let, let me finish this before I put any more on our plate. And I find it, that's what a lot of us do. We just keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. And it's like, but it's okay, you know, but you have to gauge within yourself. Right now we're running up on the holiday season. Right. <laughs> it's about to get real busy. <laughs> it's about to get crazy up in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, setting your check marks, setting your, your own boundaries, just understanding, you know, I might have to just take off. I might have to just do, you know, half of this. I might have to just save these things for next year and really, you know, take it and work on it um, and, and be focused on it and do it well. And then think about it. I mean, it's a brand new year. You know, you can make these brand new announcements. You have everybody's attention. But now, you know, everybody's about to be involved in family gatherings, uh, end of the year reflections. Uh, travel, you know, people taking a lot of trips, uh, more than what used to be around the holidays, because they're realizing that um, life experiences are something that they value more than things these days. And I'm personally really happy that folks have reached that point in them in their lives, because yeah. um, you ain't taking none of this stuff with you anyway. So that part. <laughs> You know, but I mean, have these memories and, the, you know, think about the exchanges and to think about the places that you you went and to think about, you know, how you were able to cherish that family member, you know, it's really important. Absolutely. And that mm -hmm. that speaks to time, too. You know, if you're watching, um, we a lot of the episodes on our show, we're empowering you to not procrastinate on whatever your luxury item is. And usually nine times out of 10, that luxury item is a business or some kind mm -hmm. of side hustle. But procrastination also applies to your relationships too. So Absolutely. Ayana, Ayana makes a good point in terms of taking that time out to travel, to create new memories and new experiences. So make sure you're not procrastinating on that either. Like it's important to have those memories because as we can see over the last couple of years, like life is extremely precious. You know what I mean? Like that's Absolutely. a important lesson. Absolutely. And um, yeah, it, it's it's precious. You know, they say we only get one. Uh, no one's came back and told me otherwise. You know <laughs> so, what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and, and there's so much to see. I mean, you know, and people think about uh, affordability. I mean, th this day tr travel is affordable. I mean, you think about the other things that you're spending money on. And if, if, if people were to really that do part. a deep dive on what they have spent, <laughs> you done did a round trip, trip, uh, round trip to Egypt. You know, you've done a round trip to Japan. <laughs> like you've done it, you know? So, um, and then also value the, the time that you do have. You don't have to go somewhere and, and you're not moving there. It's a trip right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to go somewhere for three, four, seven days. It's okay. But while you're there, be present. While you're there, I mean, truly taste the food, truly listen at the people laughing, truly watch the environment and just absorb that. Because when you're sitting back and you're thinking about other things, you know, it, it comes to you and it's going to motivate you because you say, you know what? I want to have that experience again. I felt so good. And when I came back, I was so rejuvenated because I had such a good time. And man, and then you appreciate how other people live. Yeah. You appreciate, of course, how you live. But you also look and say, wow, you know, they doing it over here. And then you take <laughs> little bits and pieces and you try to figure out how to implement that into your life.
I, I know that that's what I do. Absolutely. Very well said. So Thank as you. we wrap up, just remind folks where they can find you if they want to get in touch with you and where they can check out your check out your series. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um launching a new series called Ayana Fix My Business on YouTube, um, but it's going to be at Gardner Matthews, uh, G-A-R-D-N-E-R, Matthews with one T, um, LinkedIn, Gardner Matthews Global Management. And um, coming very, very soon, hopefully by Monday, we will have the Instagram posted, which is simply Gardner Matthews as well. Um, people are free to reach out to me directly on WhatsApp. I love it. Um, the phone number listed is associated with the business, which is 678-995-3206. You can send um, upload files. You can send me all your data that way. So I try to make it really convenient for people. And um, just, you know, reach out to me if you're in a position of trying to launch a business or you've gotten to start the business started and you just kind of need help to push it through a little bit. If you need business development, that's more relationships. You're trying to find out who can you either foster partnerships with or identify new um, clients, um, project management. You're working on a corporate event, right? I can help with those things and definitely with your marketing. I've had a tremendous success rate with uh, the Google platform. Everybody has their phone and people are always talking about, you know, um, restaurants near me or a lawyer near me or manufacturing company near me. I mean, you, you use your iPhone, your Android for everything. And I have uh, developed a way to successfully help those numbers um, increase. Um, I'm using the KPIs, which are provided and helping to translate that to the business owner so they can understand some of the um, changes or shifts that they need to make. And so it's just, you know, again, it's all about finding the resources. And it's basically you use me and my business services to do things that would take you a long time to go and research and do a deep dive in. And, and it, it's consultation. I'm not coming in trying to railroad your business and tell you, just going to make recommendations. It's up to you to say, OK. Um, and so, you know, like I say, working very closely with the business owner, all towards success. That That is the name of the game. How to make you successful, how to make you profitable, how to increase your visibility and how to get you into a new market, be it different types of clients, or if you're looking for growth and expansion, moving and expanding your business. So I, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Any questions, um, you know, please reach out. I'm really looking forward to um, to helping people achieve their goals. Absolutely. And if you guys want to reach out to her, I'll make sure her information is in today's show notes. So be sure to check that out over on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. You can find me at Getting the Win on YouTube, on Instagram at Getting the Win Show, on threads at Getting the Win Show, Pinterest at Getting the Win Show. But Ayana, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Always a pleasure talking to you. And you know, the door is always open. Feel free to come back on the show, especially if you have any new updates or things going on in terms of, you know, your website launch. Be sure to let me know and I'll make sure that our audience knows about it. Well, I certainly appreciate you extending this invitation, Melissa. Um, you're so, I've watched, followed your show. It is incredible. And to be a part of it in this capacity, I'm very humbled and very happy. So um, I definitely look forward to coming back and speaking with you and your audience in the future. Thank you. Awesome. You guys, make sure you follow her. Make sure you get all her information and, and hit her up. She is she has a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge. But until next time, make sure you continue to get these goals. You know what I'm saying? Work on that luxury item hashtag. Get on that. All right. List your wins in the comments below and we'll celebrate with you. Take care. And be sure to check out the merch shop. If you are curious about the shirt, you want one for yourself, you can go to gettingthewingear.com. That way you, you'll see this shirt, you'll see a bunch of other accessories as well. We've got hoodies, we've got sweats, we've got all the gifts that you could possibly wanna buy for yourself and for your folks to get the message out about being as productive as possible and staying true to yourself. 
because the mission of this show is to turn procrastinators into producers. That's why I always task you guys to hashtag get on that. Make sure you're on top of your luxury item. And that way you can rock the gear to remind the world that you are all about that luxury item. You are all about getting things done, getting the goals instead of simply setting them.